Welcome to the Legends of Iron. I'm John Anderson. Meet my co-host, Nick Best, and Aki Williams. We're going to have some amazing guests on the show. Buckle up tight, because we're going to be talking about the shit you're not supposed to be talking about. We're going to be discussing anything and everything it takes to become a legend of iron. Legends of Iron is brought to you by Muscle Nets, the creator of Carnivore. Carnivore is the most powerful beef protein on the planet. What is going down, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Legends of Iron. With me, as always, Aukum Williams. Looking large, brother. How you doing today? I'm, I'm doing pretty good, man. Pretty good. Looking, I'm out here now. Looking not, not large. Not yeah, <laughs> looking freaking large. And unfortunately, our third of the trio, Nick Best, cannot be here today. He's actually, he's doing the Hollywood thing. He's actually uh, filmed a TV show with Frank Mir, of all people. I think you're doing some crazy thing with uh, firing heavy artillery. So he'll be with us next time. But anyway, we have got a massive show. I mean massive, I'm talking massive. We have got the most massive guest any of you have ever seen generation iron has called him one of the biggest bodybuilders on the planet and this is one of these guys i hate to say it but he makes me feel like a little bitch when i stand next to him <laughs> <laughs> I, there's not that many people on the planet i can say that about but craig goliath the living legend, one of the biggest men I have ever known in person is joining us today here on Legends of Iron. What's going down, brother? Hey, man, I uh, appreciate that, bro. Coming from a freak like you guys as well. Um, <laughs> everything, everything's going pretty good, man. How about you guys? Uh, everything's going on, you know, enjoying a little bit of off-season training. Not quite as big as you, but I'm getting up there in weight. Yeah, Ox said he's about he was about 312. He's he's making a big big over 300 pounds right now. That's that's pretty big, but but it's not the 350, 360 like big Craig Goliath rolls around with with abs, I must add. So so for those of you that don't know, everybody knows, but for those of you that have been living under a goddamn rock, you don't see people over 300 pounds with abs. Well, you're looking at a guy who's been 350, 360 with abs. Well, before we get into all of the, you know, the training and the nutrition, all that kind of stuff, I want to ask Craig a couple of personal questions. So number one, I know you got a killer crib in Las Vegas. It's a big old house. I've seen a picture of your backyard. It looks like it got, looks like fucking paradise back there. Uh, you told me you just remodeled your house. Tell us about that a little bit, brother. Yeah, for sure, brother. Um, <clears throat> so, for the last, um, I've, I've been in my house for about two years now. Um, actually, wow, this November 16th will be two years, the exact date. So, um, And it's a big fucking pad, isn't it? Yeah, five bedrooms, five baths. Um, <laughs> pushing 4,000 square feet. But, um, you know, what's crazy is, um, you know, before I moved in here, uh, I lived in a little tiny condo for like six years. And um, I always had a goal that, I wasn't going to go straight for like the, the normal crib. I was going to go all out. Cause you know, bro, we're all, here. we want to do life huge. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Yeah. brother. If you're going to be huge, you got to do it huge too. So I just saved brother saved while everyone's out, you know, blowing money on the dumbest shit I've ever seen. I'm just saving brother. Cause I knew that I would need a big down payment, you know, in my situation. So I just yeah. saved, 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 man. I was going to need all new furniture and dude, I wanted nice shit. So, well, brother, you know, my Pat, think your crib is fucking sick, man. It's absolutely sick. And that fucking backyard is fucking insane. I mean, for most people, they think of a backyard. Well, this, this looks like a tropical paradise built as a, a pool. It has a lazy river. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, I've seen some pictures. I haven't seen it in person, but that thing looks fucking sick, but love the big crib, love everything. But now here's what I was really getting at. <clears throat> big guy, big house. You got a good looking lady with lots of big rounds. You know, we got the same, same, same taste in women. You got the, you got the big boobs, the big butt. <laughs> it's not just having 
a girlfriend. You tell us about this, brother. Your girlfriend's got a girlfriend. So now, now we're getting somewhere. You got two. This is the best. <laughs> Come on. Talk yeah, to us, brother. Yeah, they're like that, bro. No. Well, um, I, I mean, in a good way. Listen, yeah, listen. Yeah. myself and every other guy out there is just sitting here going, oh, my Lord, I want to hear some stuff about this. Yeah, I heard you talk about this on some other shows, too. You know, so, but, uh, you know, for any guy on the planet, a big a guy with a, you know, we're talking, we lose it. There you are. Big house, the biggest guy on the planet, and two chicks. What else does a guy want? I mean, come on now. I'm blowing More you up. I'm blowing I, you up because you deserve it, brother. No, man. Um, yeah, you know, it's just, you know, um, you know, some girl. there's girls out there, you know, they're a little different than the normal average chick. You know, there are girls out there that like girls. Absolutely. And that, and that aren't jealous, you know? So, um, that just kind of explains the situation right there, man. You know, have a girl that's into girls and is not jealous and doesn't mind if you have another girl or, you know, with her, you know? Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it's not like, you know, it's not like 100% what you think. There's a lot of, you know, it, it could get, there's a lot of drama in it too, you know? Um, like, can you imagine one girl going off on you and having two? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> There's a fight. That, 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 that would be my question. I, I, I was going to ask you because you said, you know, she's not, you know, the jealousy part is out of it, but that's kind of hard to believe, man, because women, doesn't matter. They, they find something to get angry about. So, like you said, having two, double the trouble, you're definitely right. It could be, it could be a tough pill to swallow. It could be hard to deal with. Yeah, man. Right, right now, dude, I'm actually low key kind of taking a little step back from from it as much right now just because like me and the one have stuff we need to work on so you know like right now i'm just gonna chill out with that situation but you know um we, we all went on vacation that was amazing you know we went to mexico you know we went to cali if you like you know it could be fun man it's 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 not necessarily like you know having two girlfriends or nothing it's more like just like you know yeah. like the, 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 having somebody the, that understands you and is willing to do stuff that you know enjoy each other's company, you know. I, I, yeah. I'm definitely in that, yeah. And also, Just you know, four, it's having two girlfriends. It's also a lot cooler to look at four tits than two. Yeah, I was gonna say that's that was my next thing, is brother. You're so fucking big, the big house, the big crib, the big fucking guns. Now you got you instead of you know two boobs, now you got four. You know, you got two big asses, four big butt cheeks. Now we're talking. This just this just goes right down the line of being big, massive, aggressive, and want the biggest, baddest of everything. So I got to tell you, brother, hats off. Keep fucking crushing shit. That's what it's all about. You know what I mean? I'm trying, bro. Um, I'm trying, man. It's not easy, though, bro. You know, there's a, there's a lot of positives, you know, when you're trying to get, like, nice things and big muscles and more girls, but you know, there could be negatives too, man. You know, you could get stress, anxiety, you know, like you, you, you're put on a pedestal. So you're expected to do something, you know, if I, for so I got injured, you know, we talked about this. I've been injured for yeah. like the last year. Totally. So, okay. you know, that was a lot of, that was a lot of I had to deal with too, you know, not being able to like go in the gym and put up four plates like I usually do and shit, you know? So what, was um, it a shoulder injury? No, I got nerve damage in my right arm. Oh, okay. Okay. From shrugging. It was actually from shrugging. Wow, wow. How much weight yeah. were you shrugging? Do nothing crazy, like five plates, you know, like on a Smith machine too, you know? So I think I just tweaked my neck and I ripped something out my back and then it traveled mm -hmm. on my right arm. Wow. Yeah, the nerve, I'm telling you, man, it doesn't, I got a nerve issue. I waited too long to have a back surgery, man. Once those nerves start going away, it's tough. I mean, because then, you know, obviously muscle, you know, heals very quickly, tendons, the ligaments behind that, but nerve, man, nerve is a long healing process. And <clears throat> the problem is when you start, when you have a nerve that's not firing, the muscles around it stop they get affected drastically because they don't contract the same. I got the same problem in my left calf. So I understand your pain, brother. You know, it's, it's a motherfucker. When, you know, when I'm on stage, I'm always keep my right leg back because if I kick my left leg back, that fucking calf ain't contracting. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I, 
I would give I would give anything to have the nerve damage in my calf, man, because the right arm, bro. I can't even out angle anybody, bro. So oh come <laughs> on, you gotta be fucking kidding me, Ock. Tell me this man is out of his fucking mind. Did you just hear uh, what I, I heard? I, I, oh, I, I, my fucking I, I think, God. I think it's, it's just in his head, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, listen, we all we all suffer from, you know, what do they call it? Fucking, what's the, what's the thing where he... Body dysmorphia. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We all suffer from that. There's no fucking question about it. I mean, we're all a little fucking nutty to do what we do. But the bottom line is, I understand where you're coming from because... I mean, any big guy that's worked so hard to get somewhere and then had some sort of a problem, you think it's 100 times worse than it is. The people around you don't see what you think they see. But I, I totally understand how you feel, brother. But let me tell you, and Ock, I think you can agree with me. Brother, Craig, you are still fucking enormous. <laughs> I don't feel it, man, but thank you, bro. Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> like, like John said, you know, people around you are not going to see it the way you see it, you know? Yeah. Like, what? there has been times when I've been prepping for shows and I was down to, like, 270, and you have these guys in the gym looking at me and I'm, like, still walking around, like, 300 pounds. And in my head, I feel like I'm tiny as shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but for average price, you still look big as hell, you know? You know, the, the, thing about, the thing about you, though, bro, is you got that tiny fucking waist, oh, bro. Tiny fucking that's, waist. That's right there. Is bodybuilding, brother. That is bodybuilding. And if you have a tiny waist, big yeah. legs, big arms, which you have, it's yeah. just all, you get the conditioning, you're you're set. You're set. You. That's what bodybuilding wants. They want that yeah. small waist, freaky X frame. And if, mm -hmm. you, if you have that's just genetics, you know. So yeah. if you have that, you're blessed, get the conditioning, you're set, you know. So yeah. That's what's crazy about, you know, um, you know, like when you say you feel small, man, you got to remember, man, whether you're 270 or 300, you got that small waist, man. That's that's well, crazy. You know, that's the thing, too, is that, you know, we the, the ones that are building muscle, we tend to we tend to get ourselves too connected to the scale. When in actuality, when you're a little tighter, the illusion is that you people think that we're bigger when we're lighter because that. You know, the more the more definition, the more shape you have, the the illusion becomes bigger. But you know, it's 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 just one big slippery slope. I mean, we do it because we love. It. We love when we're big. We love when we're ripped. We're just doing it because we love it. So we're fucking blessed, no matter what. Nerve injury or not, brother, you're still big as a fucking house. And I would almost guarantee, just like Ox said, you're probably the only one who notices. I, I want to ask Craig a quick a, a quick question. I, I know that he, he competed in the past, you know, and I never really un got the full story as to why he never continued competing. Great question, brother. You know, he has, he has like I said, I've seen pictures of him when he when he did shows, and he had amazing structure, you know, but I, I was wondering yeah. why he never decided to go further into it, you know? Oh, uh, yeah, dude. I, I would love to talk about that, man. Thank you. Sure. Uh, so, basically, this is how the whole everything started. So, um, I... To go over my story, you know, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. I, I just started training and I went from 150 to 225. That's 75 pounds, you know, all natural um, in like a year and a half. And, you know, um, people were like, wow, you know, like, what are you going to do with this? You know, you have a good physique, kind of like um, Greg Plitt looking, you know, big biceps, yeah. good at, not big, you know, super big, but um, Ed Connor saw my pictures and uh, he's like, I want you to come to Cali. I think you'd do a lot better out here. So mm -hmm. I went to Cali and lived in Palm Springs for nine months. And mm -hmm. um, that started like, you know, okay, I need to, I need to take this serious, you know, let's get huge, you know? Um, so I was trying to bulk up. This, and, I love that saying out of your mouth. Let's get huge. <laughs> Keep okay. going. Sorry. Sorry for interrupting brother. <laughs> yeah, no and um, yeah, this is 2006, by the way, I was like 22 and mm -hmm. um you know, I um, got these two roommates mm -hmm. and um, they were, they were bodybuilders too. And they've competed and all that stuff. So um, they jumped on cycles and uh, I'm natural. So I didn't want to do that. So I'm trying to sit there and, and keep up with these guys and uh, they're getting bigger and leaner and I'm getting fatter and fatter <laughs> and fatter. And I don't, I don't get it. You know, um, but I'm eating junk too. So it's just like, I didn't really know what I was doing, man. So I jumped, I hopped on board finally. 
and um, I got to like 290 my first time. Wow. And uh, I'm walking around in a tank top, you know, and everyone's like, are you a pro? Do you compete? Like, what? I'm like, no, dude, I'm just trying to get huge, you know? So, um, <laughs> so that's, that's when – um, that That's like your – that's your foundation right there. I'm just trying to get huge. <laughs> I'm just trying to get huge. Did you, did, you, did you come out with a T-shirt with that yet? Yeah, fuck's going to get huge. There you go. Yeah. Hell yeah. 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 <laughs> fuck that. But anyways – uh. Yeah, so um, this lady at the gym was like, why not do a show if you're going to look like a bodybuilder? I'm like, okay, I'll try it. So that's when I started my competing life. And um, I did the, the Cal in uh, 2007. And mm -hmm. um, I actually won my novice class, um, you know. And I was like, whoa, you know, like I won? Like this is like – and I had bitch titties too. Keep that in mind. That was crazy. I had some bitch tits, but uh, – they still gave it to me. But I took care of that. I took care of that the next year. But um, but yeah, man, I was like mind blown. Like, whoa, like I'm gonna make this my life, you yeah, know. Yeah. And then you know, I just started competing more and more. Um, I've done nine shows. Um, the next show I did, I got second, and then the next show I did, I got fifth. That was actually the one I got fit that was the Excalibur. And let me tell you something, there was like 20 supers that year. Remember oh, those days? That's, that's, that's a lot. Those, yeah, those are the days, man. Yeah. When you actually had it. Like that they, yeah, they just don't have that anymore. There's not enough yeah. big dudes. There's most, once most shows, the bar you go to the, uh, a local show, you probably see a one or two supers. Yeah. Bro, so the last one the, the, uh, the LA. Yeah. 2013, I was the only super. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When Ak, when I met Craig the first time, it was actually at the Olympia. I don't remember what year it was. Craig, do you remember what year it was? Was it? MHP booth. Yeah, what year was it? 2010. 2010. And we'd mm -hmm. never met before and basically had me sit. It was when I was wrestling. So I was basically had me sitting there signing pictures. Craig was just to my right signing pictures. And I see this fucking guy walk up. And he's, he's right at the first time about 300 pounds. So he's first. just on his way up. But yeah. even at 300 pounds, I mean, the dude had shape. and his fucking massive arms. And he's yeah. just sitting to my head. I was like, dude, how old are you? And he was like, what, 24 at the time, 25 yeah. at the time? <laughs> he's just, yeah. a, just a fucking baby, man. He'd only been told me how long he'd been training. He'd only been training shit. I've been training about the same time he'd been alive at that point in time. <laughs> but I remember thinking to myself, this fucking guy has got structure and a frame. I mean, I was, I remember thinking to myself, if he continues to train, I mean, how big did this guy get? Well, goddamn, four or five years later, 350 mm -hmm. pounds with that same shape, you yeah. know, and the abs, you know, even when you competed, you were on stage at like 280, correct? The last time, is that right, Craig? You know what, man? I, I, I don't even want to like, brag about that man because i wasn't peeled dude i'm just gonna be I, i'm so, gonna I be mean, peeled. but everybody's been on the stage and not peeled so fuck yeah. you know it's not like you're saying i was 280 and peeled you how big were you on the stage people like to hear that shit you know yeah, it was like around 278 i think my last show mm -hmm. i was on stage once right around 280 it was probably my worst placing ever <laughs> yeah, but, but <laughs> You know, I mean, 10 pounds will go a long fucking way. You burn, Absolutely. you take 10 pounds of fat off you, you're in a whole different call out, man, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, still, <clears throat> being on stage with abs, maybe you're not fucking peeled, but that's still a pretty big accomplishment. Not many people, oh. people want to get that big, not a good being on the stage, you know? What do you think, Ock? Yeah, yeah, definitely true. I, I wanted to finish this question because going back yeah. to why, why – Kind of like I want to like you know get to the point of why did you stop like why didn't you keep going? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so you know, I told you, you know, I, I got first and second and fifth, mm -hmm. and then uh, I went for the USA's um, mm -hmm. to get the pro card, mm -hmm. and uh, that was two thousand nine, and um, mm -hmm. I actually got pretty fucking lean, dude, like down to three point eight percent. Um, got pretty fucking lean, but dude, um, I got fifteenth out of thirty two. Not bad. I mean, not super bad for your first time, you know? Yeah, yeah, of course. I beat out half guy. I beat out half of the people. Dude, bad yeah. dude. Dude, in that class, we had like Steve Kukolo. We had, um, uh, dude, so many big names. Uh, there's Juan like, Morrell wasn't that show too, right? What? Juan Morrell wasn't that show too. 
He might have been. Dude, there was so many. Dude, oh, there was that big Sean Allen. Yes. Um, there was um, uh, Mark Mark One Mark uh, mm-hmm. Tel- See? Yeah. Um, dude, there was so many. Uh, um, what's that other guy that owns Steel Supplements? Uh, Jason. Um, Hull. Jason yeah. Hull. Um, Jeff Long. Yeah, like, this, these are these are some tough. These are all like guys that yeah that turned pro and everything. You you were right there in a really good group. Yeah, yeah. There's so many like people that are all now pro pros and killing it, or or already like retired even. Yeah, and uh, you know, so I asked the judges what's that, and they're just like, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, you're not big enough, dude. I'm like, okay. So the next year I get. I put on 25, 27 more pounds on stage in one year, but lost that conditioning, bro. So that's that's when I was like, fuck this shit, you know? Um, I don't want to do it anymore. Um, you know, I had a good run. You know, I did the USA's twice, whatever. And then um, in 2013, I started a supplement line called Goliath's Nutrition, my own line. Um, I had a good – we had, we had a good start, man. I, you know, I wish I stuck, stuck with it, man, because – it could have been big by now, man, because this is before mm-hmm. Piana, Jay Cutler, Ronnie Coleman. This was before they were doing lines. So I went yeah. that far back. Mm-hmm. And uh, I even remember, like, in the beginning, uh, when Rich Rich started doing his um, line, he called me. He was trying to get tips, like, about the uh, BCAAs and, you know, flavoring and who I use. And so, yeah, man, that's how far back. I had a, a really good, you know, um, uh, business partner. You know, bodybuilding.com was interested. We had a booth at Olympia. But then, you know, mm-hmm. I had a falling out with a business partner and I dropped it. Um, but going back, the reason why I did another show, because my business partner was like, you need to get in shape for photo shoots. Yeah, yeah. And I kept on messing up. Like, I wasn't doing cardio. Uh, <laughs> I just had no ambition. <laughs> I told myself if I stage in front of people, you know, I'll get lean. And that's where yeah. you see the black and white pictures of me that were more diced from Jason Ellis. Yeah. yeah. That was from that. Okay. I went against yeah, that- the overall. Breon. Mm. So you kind oh, of yeah. just came to that point where it was like, okay, you wanted to start using what you'd done with training and building muscle and having this massive Z start making money. It was not so much. You'd kind of, the competing part had kind of taken its course. Now it's time to make a living in the industry. That was kind of the transition. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a natural transition, you know. That's a point where I am in my career right now. You know, I'm trying to figure out okay, what's the next step? You know, where do I go from here in terms of like, yeah, I still want to compete, but I'm trying to you know figure out you know what doors do I try to open and think about the life after bodybuilding right now because I only want to do this for another maybe like four years maybe. I don't want to yeah, be doing this when I'm in my forties, you know. Yeah, bro, I think you I think you can do it, man. With that structure, bro, I yeah. think you should keep on going, man. That's my yeah. opinion. I'd be yeah. honest. I would be yeah. honest. Bro. But uh, you got to frame, dude. I told Generation Iron. I do a podcast of Generation Iron, and uh, mm. they ask who's going to win the Arnold. I said it's going to be between you and Nick. I said that that that's what it's going to be. They said why? Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, look at his frame. Like, mm-hmm. look at that waist, man. You don't see big motherfuckers with a waist <laughs> like that. It yeah, yeah. Make- Paul Delette. Paul Delette. You know, like. Yeah. I was the last guy I can remember with a fucking mm. Tony Freeman, Paul Delette and Tony yeah. Freeman. The yeah. last two I can remember with little waists and just massive arms and legs. You just don't see that cartoon look anymore, man. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's Ock, a, I mean, you're, that's you're a, on the right track, Ock, because this is a time to start leveraging yourself. Right now is where you put all those, all the, you plant those seeds. So when you start to back off on competing, they've yeah. all sprouted and you, you know, you've got the, that life after bodybuilding for sure, you know? Exactly, yeah. You know, where you are, you've climbed the ladder so high, you know, you're at the highest level, you know, you're one of the top guys. So to leverage yourself is you're in a perfect position to do it, you know? Yeah, well, uh, that's why I, I just uh, hooked up with a uh, Sheru and I'm about to head out to India in a few weeks. So I got to go out over there and uh, pick up some new fans. <laughs> you know, there you go. Well, I'll tell you, yeah, yeah, they love the- Making money, I mean, leveraging yourself in the industry with social media now, it's just everything has changed. I mean, we, our generation is so lucky that we have social media. You know, yeah. social media, there was, there was a far fewer ways for guys to make money. 
you know, guys, the top guys made a lot of money, but that next tier, they weren't making much because social mm -hmm. media wasn't there. So we're, we're really blessed in our era, you know? I mean, look at Craig, you know, that's, Craig. That's, 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 what, that's the thing I was going to point out to Craig too, is because, you know, one, you know, he didn't turn pro, but he used his, uh, his, yeah. his size and his social media presence to really make an impact. I remember when I used to work, I used to work as a counselor at a university and everybody knew I, I was competing back then. I was in an amateur. And uh, one time, one of my coworkers came up with a picture and it was Craig sitting on a train. <laughs> with two <laughs> guys. Yeah, yeah. I remember That's that. That was the first time I ever saw him. That was was a, oh. You want to be like this guy, huh? Because oh. I was riding the subway the same way that you were on the train. And I remember that picture clearly, and that picture like forever stuck in my head. Like that's that's fucking big. Oh, right I mean now, that you're on a train and literally crush two guys sitting next to you. That's big. Yeah, and, and, I, and, and that's my goal. I wanted to be like that. And the funny thing is, that's not Photoshop. That was a real oh, fucking picture. Real picture yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. That's what I said when we opened the show, man. I, I stand next to Craig. I feel like a little bitch, you know? This is a big fucking man we got on the show here, Ock. I mean, honestly, Craig, you look fucking massive sitting in there. But until someone stands next to you, they don't understand. You look massive in pictures. When someone, a normal person is next to you, then you actually get the, the idea of how fucking massive you are. Yeah, dude, remember, um, we talked... Um, we talked at Olympia, me and you. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I talked to both of you the, mm -hmm. the same year. Um, in, it was Olympia the last time I was in Vegas. Mm -hmm. Was it 19? 19, yeah, 2019, yeah. 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 I, went, I, went, I went and got a picture. Remember, we took a picture, bro, me and you. Yeah. 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 It's on my Instagram still. And um, yeah. I'm trying to look so big, too. I'm like, fuck. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and, um. And then you, bro, you had a you had your own booth, and I came by and talked to you for a little bit, man. I and I, yeah. I remember, like, dude, your traps, bro, nine k, bro. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, you gave me that. Uh, as soon as you walked away, I looked at my wife and said, "Thank God, he was making me look fucking. He just dwarfed the shit out of me." <laughs> I, I look, I mean, I look fucking great until you walk up. <laughs> you know? No, oh, dude. I mean, granted, the bottom line is, is that, you know, everybody's got their own shape. Everybody's got their own look. All I three got... of us, all three of us right now on this podcast, you, you, me, we're all freaks. There's no one above, like mm -hmm. everyone freaky in their own. We all have our own totally. freak actor, you know, but, There's... but we look at the other ones. Like I look at Ock and I look at you and I go, fuck. Look at the arms on those guys. You know I look I mean? at you and I'm like, dude, look at those arms too, bro. Look at that right tricep, bro. That's First of all, John, how, how old are you? Uh, I'm an old motherfucker. I'm going to be 50 in a few months. Oh, a lot of guys <laughs> your age can't sustain that muscle mass that you have right now. So Hell you should no. definitely be proud of yourself for that, man. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I totally, I mean, I, I look at it like this, man. <clears throat> I mean, I'm fucking living the dream. I'm just, I was able to, I was just a fucking fat little boy who was too dumb to fucking realize I couldn't do it. And now, you know, fuck man, my life has turned into this fucking great place and I lift weights is like the fucking, that's like the nucleus of what I do. And then the best part about it is, you know, you stick with a long list like all three of us have, we start to connect with others and it just, it, we all understand what we're doing. And we all, it, we all make sense to each other. The general public looks at us and doesn't get it. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, well, Craig, let's shift gears, brother. Tell me, uh, I know that the one thing that's always kind of just been crazy to me is how big you are and how you're able to eat. To I mean, like for me, I got to eat fucking tons. You know, I eat often. I don't eat big amounts of meals, but, you know, We've talked in different different little bits here and there, and I've always been just completely blown away at how you're able to get where you are with your diet. And you've always thrown it back to genetics, but tell everybody, kind of give everybody a, a, a snippet of what your diet looks like to be a 350 fucking pound bodybuilder with abs. Yeah, man, I, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be straight up with you, dude. I, I'm not an eater, man. I hate food. I don't like cheap meals. I don't like clean meals. I don't like anything that has to do with food. Um, I, I'm never hungry. Meal one is the hardest meal for me of a whole day. 
Um, I just do not look forward to any meal, man. Um, people say, what's your favorite cheat meal? I'm like, honestly, I don't really have one. Um, but if I can like somehow get something once in a blue moon, I'll get an appetite. I'll be like, well, I'm hungry. So if I do, I go take advantage of it. Enjoy life. I go eat something delicious and I just enjoy it because it's very rare. I get an appetite, man. I don't know why my body's like that. Flex Lewis actually told me he's the same way. Um, so uh, I, I don't know why I'm like that, but every meal's a chore. And to give everybody um, a little idea of like, I've heard you talk about generally speaking, eating about four times a day. So yeah. when, you, when you're going to 350, give everybody when, when you're on, cause I know you dip between, you know, 360, 30, you kind of bounce around as we all I'm do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You never maintain one weight too long, but when you're going to 350 plus, tell everybody what you're eating. So when I'm trying to get to like 360, 370, um, okay, I, excuse me, 370. <laughs> oh, that's um, fucking crazy, brother. With abs, yeah, I just um, it's still four meals, man. Um, it's still four meals. I just up the carbs, and um, I up the sh I do shakes too. So it's not just four meals. I I do a post workout shake and I do a protein shake before bed. Gotcha. Um, so if I'm trying to get huge. I will add more carbs to like, you know, the meals and the, the shake before bed. If I'm just mm -hmm. chilling and I'm cool where I'm at, you know, I don't add carbs to those shakes. But, um, you know, hypothetically, man, and I'll add more cheats too. So if I'm doing four meals, I'll try to do a cheat like at least every other day, you know, make it like a massive meal, you know. Yeah, and usually so you, you just increase you, the calories. What you say? I think you try to get more calories in there. Yeah, yeah. I just, you know, because I can't do the five, six, seven meals, man. I tried oh, yeah. to work for me. Um, yeah. now, when I coach people and they want to get big, I they have to do at least five, six, seven. Like, there's no way around it. And the, that's yeah. why I don't, that's why I really don't like to say I do four, you know, mm -hmm. because like, you do four, you know, well, I, my genetics are a little different, you know, um, yeah, yeah. but I would never that's have something. Meals. That's one thing I find very common, you know. A lot of guys that are big, they're not very big eaters. You're not no. the first person I heard say that. I'm, I'm pretty much similar to, especially in the off-season, it's very hard for me to get the meals in. When I'm contest prep, I eat more frequently, but in the off-season, it's very hard for me to get the meals in. So it's but something very... Too, right? When you're doing a show, your carbs are lower. So yes, it may be easier to eat yeah. because cool. Because carbs will fill you up. Yeah, yeah. But I, so, I definitely understand where you're coming from, you know. It's, it's like you said, genetics plays like a huge role in this, you know. Because I, I, I got to say, both of you guys, God damn it, both of you guys got some serious genetics behind you, and it pisses me off. <laughs> you know, both of you guys got the arms. Like, I mean, I've always wanted bigger arms. Arms is something I'm always working for. You guys both got the biggest fucking arms, and I, Jesus Christ. And talking about genetics. I didn't have that either. But anyway, sorry to interrupt, Doc. Wait a second. Then what the hell do you call those things, Ray, I'm, that I'm looking at? <laughs> okay. We, that's, we, that's what I, was, I wasn't trying to say anything at we, all. Well, we, we, we whip Dude, out a tape measure, and we I'm, start wrapping around arms. I'm going to be at the tail end of the pack. I fucking guarantee it. <laughs> Whatever you say, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so sorry for interrupting. Four meals a day, you just kind of increase like oxygen. You just kind of change the composition of what you're eating. And so you're really putting a huge genetic disposition behind how you're able to maneuver, you know, with, you know, getting your body wet up. And keep in mind, it's not like you're just getting big. You're getting big keeping your abs, you know? I mean, you've always maintained that bodybuilding is a little waste abs. It's not just getting fucking puffy and, and nasty looking. You've done that. I've never seen a picture of you without abs. Bro, you know, to me, man, you know, if you don't have abs yeah. or at least decent looking abs, like, you know, when you look at like, that's a six pack, you know, I'm not saying shredded abs, but if, if, if you don't have abdominals, you know, you're not a bodybuilder, you're a power lifter, you know, that's just my opinion. Um, mm. You know, bodybuilding is symmetry, you know, aesthetics, you know, you got to have muscle bellies, like that's bodybuilding, man. So if you're going to get big, get big the right way, get your muscles big, keep the waist. Okay. Keep the ab. Back. Yeah. You know, like how big can I get and get fat? You know, I never thought, you know, that was the correct way to do it. I mean, obviously when you're younger, you know, you're, you know, 
you don't know any better. So you're just eating everything in sight. That's a little different, you know, but when you get older and you get more knowledge, you realize that, you know, you got to keep it lean, keep it tight. You got to have the abs of blazing through the night. Let me, let me ask you a question. <laughs> On a serious question. Have you ever been, uh, or tried to somebody ever try to out angle you at like these expos and stuff like that? Oh. Yeah, you just choking up. <laughs> <laughs> it is it's no. not possible, man. It's like this this is the guy that he, he not only is he big as a fucking house, he knows how to stand just right to make his body parts look fucking like they're like the camera got warped or something. John, believe it or not, there will be there there have been guys, I'm sure Craig can attest to that, that try to out angle him. Oh, yeah, just try, out- try. Wouldn't you say try, but they're not pulling it off, you know? <laughs> yeah, Craig, well, tell us some stories about that. You get some guys that fucking try to twist and turn and, and fucking catch the right angle on you, and you just look at them and go, no, I'm putting you away. Snap I, as many I, pictures as you I, want. <laughs> you're you're going to laugh at this, actually. So the last two Olympias I went to, um, 2019, where I saw you guys, mm-hmm. and then uh, the one that just happened a couple weeks ago, um, I was there too. Um, oh, I actually out angled Big Rami. Did you guys see that? No, I didn't. How did you see that photo? Go to my Instagram. Go to my Instagram. Yeah, I'll have, I'll have to look that one up. Yeah, I out angled in, in a fucking hoodie of all things. A hoodie, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but no, me, you know, Rami's the king, bro. I'm not. I'm not trying to say anything I, I just you know you know i just did my saying i just like yeah, to no dis- we got it yeah. we got no yeah. disrespect we're just having fun yeah, no disrespect, yeah. fuck yeah 100 um, but um <laughs> the last two olympias i went to when a fan wanted a picture um mm. i told them i'll take a picture with you as long as you out angle me ah. so, <laughs> so i actually let everybody out angle me i took a step back yeah yeah all right so that's what i was doing um last year but you know because of my injury i wore a hoodie at this mm-hmm. last yeah because you know my right arm's a little off so you know yeah. bigger exia bigger exia yeah yeah, or, yeah. <laughs> um everyone's like why are you wearing a hoodie i'm like because i can't out angle anybody so <laughs> <laughs> now, now how, how is, how's the injury coming along 50 percent better man that's it just half okay yeah it but sucks I, I, wish you, I wish you a very uh speedy recovery man Thank you, brother. I know you miss you miss lifting heavy and you know. I miss it. You know, I can't chest and shoulders. I can't go super hard on. I could go hard on legs and back, um, and biceps, but everything else, um, I can't go as hard. Yeah. Well, that's speaking of which, let's let's kind of dive into training because I know Craig before your injury. You know, there's been some pretty crazy. I mean, Grant, I know you've also you've also kind of shifted gears at one point. Said I'm going to just stay with machines and stay away from the free weights you've kind of changed your philosophy a few times but i can remember at one point you banged out like a set of 20 reps with four fucking plates 405 on incline that's yeah. fucking crazy brother that's big it's time <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell, talk to us a little bit about some of the fucking crazy shit you've done at the gym yeah i, I got some pretty impressive lifts um not like you know um five plates um i did four plates 20 and then i did five plates like six seven or eight um and then um on an incline yeah an incline yeah jesus christ brother not many i mean most people would love to do that once on a fucking flat bench let alone an incline god damn yeah. Yeah. um I was, like, at, my, at my strongest i was doing uh four or five on incline for like nine ten reps i never got past 10 20 is insane and freaking, you know what, man? Like, I I don't really do that. That was like 2015, 16, 17 when I was doing those kind of lists, man. Now that I'm getting old, you know, I'm not, I'm still not. Like, <laughs> I love it. But um, you're, 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 just, you're, crazy you're shit. just strong mm-hmm. as a house. So real quick on that level with these kind of lifts going on, when you're talking some massive weights, you're pushing You've mentioned having this thing with your with the nerve in your arm. Is this the first injury you've had your whole career? Ever in life. That's Ever. insane, brother. That's insane. But the numbers you're talking about and not – you know how many people have put that kind of weight on some sort of a, uh, you know, a bar, barbell press and fucking like torn a peck completely off the fucking bone? 
That's crazy. So you've done all this training, built all that muscle, and this is the first injury you've ever come across. I mean, you you ever pull muscles or just no. nothing? Nothing. That's good, man. That, that means your, your form and everything is perfect. You know, yeah, you don't just this, this is a this is a, I wish I had a tear, man, because this is like a serious injury. Yeah. Wow. So I wish I had something like a tear, like because I would have already been back in the game ages ago. Yeah. 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 So yeah. nerve damage is a little more serious, man, especially when it's in your right arm. And so what, it, what, are, what are what type of treatment are you doing to like try to fix that? At the moment, nothing. I gave up. Um, I was doing every. I was doing. Well, I'm taking. I'm. T that's not true. That's not true. Um, at first, I was seeing a chiropractor two to three times a week. I was mm -hmm. doing exercises at night that he had me doing. And I was taking peptides, 507. Okay. And um, it was helping a little bit. But then after six, seven months, dude, I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm just going to give up a little bit. Because I was just getting, you know, it's just a lot of work. And for just a little, you know, you know. So now um, a client sent me, like, these pills and this cream. And I've been using that. And I have actually noticed, like, a lot less numbness in my arm. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of. Training them, so I'm just gonna keep on going with it, man. You know, this could take years to, to get rid well, of, brother. Check this out. So, just a little, I'm I've been going through the same thing for a long time. I waited too long to have a back surgery, and so basically, the nerve was impinged. And ultimately, what happens is the it, the inflammation around that nerve is what is what makes the you know, it's making it worse. So, controlling the inflammation at the origin up, and I think you said it was a, from in your neck, right. Yeah, yeah, so that's going right down your arm. So you got to basically try to control the inflammation up at the origin of that nerve is going to make – that's what I've been focused on in terms of uh, – because my nerve is that S1 that runs down the back of my leg. So for me, it's all about controlling inflammation in my lower back. So for you – Always, gonna, always get, getting work done and make sure that it doesn't build up too much. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, getting that shit released. Yeah. And then, you know, more importantly, you know, like, you know, like when I do deadlifts or squats or something, I know the air is going to be tight. I get in the fucking hot tub and I stretch that shit before all that lactic acid freezes up around that fucking before you train or after? No, I do that after. Okay, so you get in the hot tub. Yeah, and it's really the really, reason I'm going in the hot tub after is because you know obviously that lactic acid is in there. If I don't you know stretch and get moving around that next fucking morning, everything's tight. Obviously, it's that's what's what's tight, and you're moving around that creates that inflammation on that nerve, and it flares up. So really try this like oxane, you know, get it worked on, make sure that you're, you know, creating, you're doing what you can to, to release the stress in that area. The nerve will, will have a lot better chance of, because I can't remember the studies, but I looked into it. I mean, it, they, the nerve recovers at an alarmingly slow rate. It's unbelievable. I know. <laughs> I so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, my part of, Part of my nerve issue is I waited too long before I started to actually deal with it. So, you know, I, I, if you started working on it right away, I wish that I had done that. I didn't even realize that my, that the nerve S1 nerve was inhibiting my, my uh, inside, uh, my calf, the, the head of the inside head. What would I call that? Uh, when you're looking at me, the, the inside part between the knee fucking part, it doesn't even contract. It's just like a little fucking, but a little puddle of mush, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway just stay on top of you know stay on it because you're when you started right away and you continue to go you're you're fighting it from getting worse and that's what you know i wish that i had done that myself you know yeah i, I need to get back, i need to get back at it fighting it man for sure and i'm going to yeah because there's nothing worse i mean i look at my calf and I just look at myself with just complete disgust and distaste. Like, Jesus Christ. I, 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 I this happen? Like he said, you know, just, just don't, you know, keep, keep doing the little things, you know? Yeah. Just take, take it slow and take it one step at a time. <clears throat> yeah. But don't, don't completely give up on it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. For sure. Right. You're right, man. I mean, and, and that's, that's what we do. If you think about it, it's, it's consistency is what makes us who we are. You know, this because, you know, we've been doing this for so long. Most people don't have the fucking nuts to do what we do, you know, decade after decade. That's where we are, where we are. 
Well, unfortunately, sometimes there's some of the shit we really don't want to do that tags along with the shit we want to do, <laughs> you know, and this is this nerve shit is one of them, brother. So stay on it. You'll get it, brother. You know, shit, you you're successful with everything you do. You just got to keep putting your mind to it, you know? Yeah, man, I think you're right for sure. hundred percent. Yeah. <clears throat> so talk to us a little bit. I remember there was a time, I don't remember what it was, but you'd said that you'd kind of converted from free weights into more machines, just more of like a preservation, um, you know? Yeah, man. Just, I, just like you said, man, I just less free weights. I just, you know, Cutler actually told me, you know, to, um, you know, do more machines and um, hammer presses, you know, just to keep it safe. And, um, you know, I, I take a lot of knowledge from him, you know, here of him being over here in Vegas, you know, so any little things I can gr grab from him, I'll do. So I stopped with like, you know, the inclined dumbbell benching and, you know, all that shit. And I just did more like hammer strength machines, like especially for back, you know, and um, I think back being one of my better body parts, man, you know, I, I have hammer strength to thank for that. You know what I mean? Like doing a lot of machines with weights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Build that. Thing. Yeah. Uh, now, did, did you did you notice any difference in the development of the muscle in terms of using the free weights versus the machine? Yeah, I feel like I got more muscle. Actually, as crazy as it sounds, with like the hammer strength, you know, machines and the and you know the not necessarily. I don't do a lot of machines, um, like normal machines, but hammer strength. I do a lot of. I'm a big yeah. hammer. Especially so you feel like more muscle activation. Yeah. You could, you could get a better squeeze too. You know, like okay. you, could, you could put on three, four, five plates and get a squeeze, you know? Yeah. 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 When you think about it, when you got, when you got a, you're doing a bent over row, there's a lot of shit you got to keep straight and tight just to make that muscle contract. If you're hooked up with a machine with similar weights, you're not worried about, you know, keeping yourself in the right position. The machine's keeping you where you need to be. So you're, all your focus is just in that muscle contraction, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Very good yeah. Point, yeah. What was that, Ock? I said, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, because I came from the world of strength, you know, where that was my first love. That's my first, uh, first go. And in strength, you're, you're finding a way to move something from a to b and you're you're using every bit of your body you're leveraging yourself you're using as many muscles as you can and so when i then obviously as i come to bodybuilding i start to learn that okay this is not about just moving this fucking weight this is about finding a way to move the weight but making the muscle you want to work do the work not your yeah. whole fucking body you know so you know doing bent over rows with some obscene amount of weight when you're not really working your back is not really bodybuilding <laughs> You know I, mean? I have a question for both of you. <clears throat> um, now, this is probably more in your younger years, but I'm I'm curious if if you guys were ever like, w would there ever be a day when you'd wake up and you'd go to the gym, and <laughs> one day would be like, I'm gonna focus on the squeeze and the contraction, but then you'd have another day where you're like, I'm gonna get fucking huge. I'm gonna lift heavy ass weight. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you, guys you, go, you go first, Doc. Okay. You go first. <laughs> I mean, I, I would I would say now that I'm older, I focus mostly on the squeeze and the contraction. But when I was younger, I focused on all I just want to get fucking huge. Yeah. So I, yeah. I would go to reverse. Yeah. Definitely <laughs> when I was when I first started lifting, I didn't give a fuck about contraction or squeeze. No. Or I just wanted to lift heavy weights and just get fucking <laughs> big as well. Real, yeah. yeah, seriously. That's where I was too. I was, you know, I'd be the guy, okay, let's put five wheels on the squat. How many times can you squat it? Let's just take this to the end. You know, you're walking out a bar with no intention of putting it away because you realize the last rep, you're just not going to be able to stand up. That for me, that was the kind of fucking training that, that really I love. Remember at remember 49, I can't do that much anymore. What's that brother? Remember when you would do leg days and you would just cancel any plans you had at night, like whether it was a chick or two chicks or three chicks, whatever the fuck it is, a fucking birthday party. You're just like, I'm not doing shit tonight. It's leg day. I'm going to fucking kill this shit and I'm going to fucking be laying in bed all night, you know? Well, brother, you know, just on that level, you have a nasty workout. You come home and you want your chick to take care of you. Well, just remember, you got two, you son of a bitch. <laughs> 
I'll tell you guys a, a, a very funny story. So a few days ago, I was at my gym uh, training. I think I was doing uh, incline dumbbell presses. And the gym that I train at is very packed. And I was waiting on the dumbbell, um, one of the, the benches to do incline presses. And there was a kid next to me, and he was waiting for a bench also. So I'm just being a nice guy. I'm like, you know what? You can just jump in with me because you're doing the same thing. So I'm, you know, I'm training. I start off with a hundred pound pressing it. I see this kid picks up a hundred pounds and he's pressing it too. So I'm like, okay, this kid is trying to hang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's so, motivated, bro. He's yeah, motivated. I, 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 I'm, I'm telling you. So good I, I for him, up, man. I moved up to 120 and I pressed it for like about 15 or 20 reps or whatever. And all of a sudden the kid disappeared. And I'm like, what the fuck happened? So I finished up my set finally. And I went over to another machine and I see him. So I'm like, yo, what happened? He's just like, yeah, you know, I, you did the 100 pounds. I did the 100 pound. And then you moved to 120. And I was like, fuck, I can't do that shit. So I just walked away. <laughs> <laughs> so the kid, the kid literally did his, uh, his heavy set. Because he see me do 100 pound. He literally did the heavy, because he can't go up above 100 pounds. So he did. He warmed up with what he usually end the workout with. Just because he was trying to keep up with me. And I remember <clears throat> me starting out, I would have the same mentality. So that's why I said about, like, when I was younger, I just wanted to get big as fuck. Because I wouldn't care about my tearing my shoulders or whatever. I just wanted to lift anything in the fucking gym. And because he okay. see me lifting like that, he, like, literally, that's all he wanted to do. <laughs> and you think from that kid's standpoint, he's thinking, this is Akin Williams, this is an Olympian. I'm going to get myself all prepped and ready. So when he gets, when he's on his way up to Dumbbell Rack, I'm going to jump and I'm going to get a set with him. He planned his whole fucking workout around <laughs> one set with you, brother. That's pretty <laughs> cool, man. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, that's you inspired the shit out of him. That's fucking great. I mean, bottom line is we all want to inspire people around us, you know, because yeah, yeah. we remember what it was like. We remember what it was like coming up and you're kicking and scratching and, you know, that big guy you're looking at with these huge eyes, you know, he gives you just some sort of confirmation you're doing a good job and it just makes you want to go 10 times harder. So you took that kid and, man, you you gave him something that that probably changed the rest of his training career right there, bro. That's good shit, you know? One, 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 one set at a time, man. One set at a time. That's it. <laughs> so, Craig, tell, in terms of training, do you have, like, training partners? Do you train by yourself? Um, it's always different, man. Sometimes I'll train by myself for a while and I'll just put, listen to music right now. I have a training partner. Um, you know, I started off coaching him and training him and then we just became friends. So now he's like my full blown on training partner, but, um, yeah, man. So yeah, I guess I could definitely say I have a training partner now. Yes. So have you burned through lots of training partners? Like most guys, like most of us, We've had plenty of partners come and go because they think they can do it until they realize how hard we work. Ock, I'm sure you've burned up plenty of partners too. You've got yeah, to I feel like sometimes when you need that extra motivation, just training with somebody definitely helps you get through the workout a lot better than training by yourself. <laughs> I'm in the gym by myself and I'll have like no motivation, you know, but you seeing somebody do the same way to try to do something, one up you a little bit, kind of inspire you to you know, just keep going harder and stuff like that. So I'm always a fan of having a training partner. Yeah. Did you, did you burn up a lot of training partners? Like when I was, when I pretty much through my whole different, uh, all of my different the stuff I've done with weight training, no matter what I was doing, I would always have people that want to come train, but they would never last more than a few months because, you know, it's real easy to kick ass for a few months, but when everything hurts and you know, there's always that the honeymoon phase is gone <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I always uh, get uh, people that want to train back and chest and shoulders with me. But when it comes to legs, it's very hard to find a training partner. <laughs> yeah. 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 Craig, what about you, brother? You have certain body parts that people are not going to train with you. Honestly, man, um, going back to what you said, dude, I, I honestly, I always really train by myself, dude. Um, up mm -hmm. until, up until like the last six months. Um, I always training by myself because no one can keep up with me. You're right. Like leg day, chest day, whatever. Um, yeah. uh, they'd be like, dude, I want to get huge. And then they start training. Like they pussy out. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you, you know, yeah. Up until six months ago, I, I was pretty much trained by myself for a very long time. 
Listen, yeah. man, you put four or five on a bar and you do 20 reps. How many guys are going to be motivated to keep training with you? <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, when, you, when you're really in your training too, like it, I've, a few different times I've had people that have joined my training, and even whether it be weight training or even like, like I used to run hills, you know, different parts of my, of my training. And, uh, you know, I've, I've had multiple people that have like tried to hang and like literally pass out. Or I had one guy, he just disappeared. He, he popped up a, a week or so later. I think he, he had a, like a mild heart attack or a mild stroke. I can't remember which. And I actually felt kind of bad. I was like, listen, I'm not, wasn't telling you to do anything. You're just trying to hang in here. But <clears throat> at the same time, we're in there doing what we got to do. And if someone wants to, to tag along and, and they think they could do it, you know, what, what's going to happen? And, you know, it's, there's a certain level of responsibility people got to take for themselves when they're trying to do what we do. You know what I mean? Very true. But yeah, no, training is, uh, training is one of those things. It's, I mean, for Craig, for me, a good training session is like a fucking big dose of Prozac. The rest of my dad could wreck my fucking car. It doesn't make a difference. Are you that same way, brother? Absolutely. <laughs> well, that's so funny, Ock. <laughs> as, long, as long as you get the work done, huh? That's, you get that work done. It's, it's, there, there's actually proven studies that when you really, really dig and when you're working really hard, your brain is releasing different endorphins and different shit. And it, it totally, for, for me, after my workout, I'm, I'm going to have a good day. It's just the way it works. As long as I get my work in, it, it's literally like I always make the joke. It's like my Prozac. And I don't know how I would live my life without my daily dose. You know, Craig, you get that same thing? Does it kind of keep you mellowed out? <clears throat> when, do, um, when do you guys train? Um, after what meal? Meal number one, meal number two, meal number three. When do you guys t technically train? Um, during the day, I'm kind of curious. I'm a midday guy. Longer towards the ending of the day, so I'll uh -huh. try to get like at least like three meals in first before I try training. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm the yeah. same way. It's just I'm up. If I'm up real early, <clears throat> I'm one of those guys. I like to get up when. I mean, I'm a fucking five o'clock. I've texted you like five o'clock before, Craig. But I'll bottom probably, line, <laughs> because I, I, I would have bet, I would have bet anywhere between like three and four usually. Yeah, mm -hmm. see, I, I got that five o'clock in the morning. I'm up early. I'm fucking getting my shit done. Nobody, no one's around to fuck with me. That's sort of my successful time. So I'm still getting, I'm kind of the same. You know, Ock, you're trained later in the day. Craig, you're getting your three meals in. I'm about three, three, four meals in deep too when I train. It's just the, the timetable is a little different. I, I know a lot of people that like training in the morning, like morning, like right after their first meal. They, they tend to think that they, you know, it's more productive. They burn more calories. They, you know, they get in shape easier that way. I'm more of a person that I have to get at least three meals in because I don't feel like I'm strong early in the morning. Towards the end of the day, I feel like a lot stronger. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> There's that period of your day where you feel like you've got your peak optimum yeah. physical performance. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's really nice to go into the gym when you're feeling – your best versus like we've all had to train late at night or early in the morning just because we had to and you muscle through those but those are not the those are not the sessions that we live for you know yeah. what i mean unfortunately those are the time when the gym is usually most packed if you decide to train later on in the day yeah 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 that's that's one of the things that i've been i goddamn training in the gym with a lot of people that's something i've avoided like the plague from the gym <laughs> You know, it's too many people. If I got to wait for something, that doesn't fucking work for me. You know, <laughs> my time is too fucking valuable, man. I built a fucking sick little gym right here on the premises. I have a, mo a few other gyms I'll go, but I'm always seeking the, 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 the gym or the place or the time where there's nobody around, you know? So. Well, what about but, you, Craig? You, uh, you are, I mean, in terms of, uh, how packed the gym is? Does it bother you or you don't really care? I like it packed. Um, like, I'll tell you why. It's really weird. I love it, brother. I love the honesty. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, when you hit a weight of like 360 pounds, let me, I'm going to be honest with you. You're sluggish. You're um, tired. Um, it's a lot of weight to carry around, man. You try to become used to it, but sometimes it doesn't work that way, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, so, when I get to the gym, 
I need movement. I need, I need people being like, you know, are you, how many more do you have left? Or, you know, like move, like bodies moving, yeah. you know, I, I need the energy flow because my yeah. energy is really low. So I need yeah. like, if I go to an empty gym, I'll, I'll, I'll be sitting on my phone like, oh shit, it's been five minutes. I better do a set. You know, like I need the movement, yeah. you know, having a training partner now, um, that helps. But, you know, sometimes, sometimes this motherfucker will be doing the same thing. I'm like, bro, you're up. Let's go get off the Instagram. <laughs> You know? Yeah. Oh, uh, dude. That's uh, that's one of my fucking pet peeves, man. If someone wants to train with me, you fucking pull your phone out of your pocket, you get the fuck out of here. You know? <laughs> You're fucking, we're training right now. <clears throat> you know, you want to fucking go on Instagram? Go to the fucking bathroom, sit on the fucking toilet and, and watch Instagram. We're going to kick ass, and you're not fucking kicking ass surfing the fucking web. You know, there's, there's nothing that's, I mean, you get in your zone, and then you fucking go to your phone. You're immediately out of your zone. Maybe I'm just too old school, but I've had training partners, and I told them. I, 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 I think you're I too old school because this new generation, when they train, they have to take a selfie every set. Dude, I'm telling you, I've had training partners that were that were younger. I've had a couple of younger guys. That, I love the younger guys that are hungry because they fucking work hard, you know, and that inspires the shit out of me. But I swear to God, I told one of them, I said, I swear to Christ, you pull that fucking phone out one more time, you cannot train with me anymore. And this is when I had my own gym and we were going in when no one was there. It was just two of us. But put that fucking phone away. What is wrong with you, goddammit? But you're totally correct, Doc. It's the newer fucking generation, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, if it was one thing, if someone's picking up their phone because they're, you know, they're dealing with some business or, or a sick family member, that's fine. But Jesus Christ, I mean, let's remember what we're here for, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, going back to what Craig said about the movement stuff, I, I, I tend to feel that way sometimes. Having a gym that's actually really packed definitely gives you some motivation. Because, you sometimes, know, coming up to you and asking you, you know, how many more sets you have left kind of makes you speed, speed up the workout a little bit, you know? Yeah, <clears throat> I can see that. I mean, I think if I ever end up at a place where I'm in, a, I'm in more of a, uh, a, a more people in the environment. I think at that point, I find, I find it for me personally, I find it actually more helpful to motivate people around me. Cause that's, that's, that's a big part of what I do now is just trying to help people realize that yes, they can. You just got to fucking stop being afraid. You can't and give it a fucking crack, you know? So that, that whole thing of being around people always turns into me kind of you know, giving some of myself a way to motivate, which I don't complain about. But when it's just time for me to go train, I know Craig and I, we talked about getting together for a training session. Um, so I'm sure we'll be going into a packed, we'll be, we'll be going to train where he is. So we'll be going into a, a packed house. Is that right, Craig? Um, Not necessarily, man. Um, If we go, well, see, I wake up a lot later than you, man. So you'll probably be like, <laughs> you'll be like, You'll be like two or three meals in and I'll be one meal in. But, um, you know, usually around one thirty, if I do that, that to me is like one meal in. And, um, you know, it's usually a little chill, you know, it's not crazy. If you go yeah. at six, now it's packed, yeah. you know, yeah. but I, I didn't, I didn't tell you guys, you know, um, when I go to the gym, I, you guys told me you went like three meals in, I mm. go, it, it differs. It could be one or two meals in. It's always mm -hmm. different. Um, all yeah. depends on what I got going on at night, you know? So if I have plans at night, I'll go early at one thirty with one meal in. Um, yeah. I'll go at five with two meals in, you know? So um, if, if I have just a relaxing night, so, but I do prefer to get more meals in. I have a better workout, a better pump, yeah. more energy. So I do agree mm -hmm. with that hundred percent, you know, but yeah. also sometimes it's nice to get out of the way, you know, and you come home, you lay down, you're just like with set. You know, yeah. just back. <laughs> just feel like feel like your day is over. Yeah. <laughs> so the going way. into these gyms that are packed all the time, tell me about some of that because every once in a while I'll see on your Instagram, you'll film somebody doing some really stupid shit. Like just recently, you filmed some chick trying to take an ass picture of herself. Yeah. You were right. you were narrating it. It was fucking funny as hell. So, so that's it, called. It, so that's called. There's all kinds of different stuff. So that's called the get that selfie boo. Yeah, you know what to do. <laughs> he's got so, this shit labeled, Doc. I yeah. love it, dude. He's, oh. he's got... <laughs> yeah. So 
when I see a girl trying to get that selfie and angle that ass, I'll be like, get that boo, yeah, you know what to do, you know? And, uh, you know, I'll record them. And, um, you know, sometimes I'll do the love is in the air. I don't know if you saw those, like where I find people like going at it. I'm just like, love is in the air, you know? So I got a bunch of different I mean, shit. You always see, there's always some chick trying to make her ass look big and round. You know, that's, that's every chick wants the big and round ass. So they're looking for the right lighting, the right angle. And then they got big fucking Craig Goliath catching them on his fucking story. Narrate as they go. It's fun, but fun can't shit. hide. <laughs> I will find so, you. Will so tell you. us about the funniest one of these things. Of, of all the things you got, you have all these different things that you narrate, you label, you sing to them. It's fucking great. Tell us about the fucking most off the wall, crazy one of these situations that you can remember. So back in 2018 and 19, that's when I kind of did the comedy a little more hardcore than I do now. Now I'm getting older. I'm chilling out. It's more just simple things like the drive throughs Like when I go through Starbucks or something, I'm like, um, hey, uh, what's up? Uh, what do you recommend that's going to get me huge? You know, they're like, um, excuse me? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Um, what, what drink? You know, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to bulk up, you know? And they're like, uh, you know, so people like that shit. But back in the day, I used to go a little more hardcore with the pranks. And um, I used to go to Walmart and I would take little tiny bottles of water and I would throw them in people's carts when they weren't looking. And I'd record it from a distance. And I'd always make it like swoosh. Like I have a really good aim. So I would just be like nailing these. I call it the flow throw. And oh. um, I, I mean, so dude. What are you doing? You're throwing a fucking bottle of water into their cart? From a distance. <laughs> but like, like a shot. Like a, like a shot. You know? Like, like, you know shot. <laughs> yeah. So I mean. It's, Dude, I did it as a joke once, and people were, like, dying laughs. And they're like, you got to post that more. So I just started doing it more. And uh, they still want it to this day, but I'm just like, you know what, man? 37, you know, like. Dude, listen not- to this, though. Listen to this. This is the best part. So some fucking guy is in the security room watching all this shit on the camera. And he's just praying to fucking God that you don't do something enough or he has to go and ask you to leave the fucking store. Can you imagine? How would you imagine if you're a security guard sitting in a room, looking at a camera, watching this big son of a bitch throw shit at other people's cars, thinking you might have to escort him out. Are you shitting in your pants or what? You know, what's funny is I never even thought about that. You're, <laughs> oh, yeah. you're right. There's like cameras and shit. And I'm sitting oh, there. Yeah. Doing- Oh, yeah, there's some rent-a-cop that's thinking to himself, oh, please, please let this not turn into a problem. <laughs> I never thought about that. That's crazy. Yeah, they can see all that shit on cameras. Why is this guy throwing waters, bottles of water in people's cars? So you oh. throw the bottle of water in the cart, and what are the people doing? Because I don't, I don't remember seeing these videos. Yeah, because they're from a while ago. I don't necessarily do them anymore. You can see some of the, some of them in my highlights. Go on my Instagram. You can see in the highlights. I posted I mean, some. So what you throw this in there, the person sees this small bottle of water going. And what are they doing? They looking around? They, look. they see it's you? <laughs> yeah, they look. Oh. I'm already, like, as soon as, oh. they, as soon as it hits the cart, I'm out. You know? Because I'm, th- I'm picturing, I'm picturing, you know, you throw that in there. They see it. They turn around and you go, sigh. <laughs> no i'm out once it hits i'm out okay like, I'm good out. so, so yep. you're not just scaring the daylight set of these poor folks that's good yeah. you're just having fun okay beautiful just, <laughs> he walks away right out there. <laughs> <laughs> they're probably looking at their car like where the hell is the water come from yeah uh, they're like what the f-? yeah well brother check this out here's uh Everybody has that thing that kind of got their journey started. You know, like for me, I saw the, I saw the fucking movie Conan the Barbarian. The first time I saw Arnold, something switched in me. Was there some sort of a switch? Was there a light switch that just got boom, something happened and you were forever changed? Probably pumping iron. Really? Yeah. When I saw Arnold, I was just like, that's a human being. Like you can look like that. Yeah. Like, what is, what is this, you know? Um, and I think that's what really motivated me, you know, to want to like start getting more serious with bodybuilding and not just like look lean and cute, you know? I wanted to become a monster, you know? 
And at that point, you like, okay, I, <clears throat> I want to be the, the biggest fucking guy on the planet. Little did you know, a decade later, you would be. <laughs> is that literally, <clears throat> is that literally what happened? You saw it, you're like, that's, it just was like the, the fire was lit and you just took off and that was it? No, no, no. I'll, I, what made me want to be the biggest dude was when Generation Iron in 2016, I told you the story on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they, they, they did a video on like the biggest monsters and like, they're like, I, they, you know, there was Piana and big Rami and Morgan, like all these monsters. And, um, they claim me as the biggest freak. And, I, and when I saw that, I was never trying to be like a freak. I was just three twenty chilling, you know, like just yeah. not keeping the state. not a freak, just three twenty chilling. <laughs> yeah. Chilling. N not a lot of shit, you know, um, not a lot of food just chilling. And, um, when I saw that, you know, I was like, okay, let's take it to another level and see, like, let's actually try to get huge, you mm -hmm. know, and not just chill. And, um, yeah. that's when I went for like 350, 360. I just kept on growing and growing and growing, man. And then, you know, Louis Marco, do you remember him? Yeah. 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 I don't know. He started talking. He was like the first guy to actually start putting me out there on YouTube and, um, you know, have my back when people are like, oh, he's all synthol and all this negative shit. And I'm and like, no, he's like, no, I don't think he is. I think he just uses good angles and he's really wide. And I think he has a, a small waist and like all this good stuff. So when he started promoting me more, you know, um, he was like, let's do podcasts. And I was like, sure. You know, even though I didn't want to because I was shy back then, I was like, let's do it. And, you know, he actually helped build up my following in the very beginning, you know. So I, I, you know, I have a lot to actually thank for him. You know, he's not around anymore. At least I don't think so. But he was actually really popular at one point. And then Dave Palumbo um, brought me on RX Muscle, and you know, he said the same thing: the biggest freak I've ever seen. I'm just like, whoa, this is like, it's really cool hearing it from people like this. You know, like not just some like normal dude. Yeah. You know, Dave Palumbo, he's seen everything. You know, he's been around forever. So. When he said that on our show, like you're the one of the biggest freaks I've ever seen, I was just like mind blown. I, I was just more, I kept on getting more motivation and more motivation and more motivation just by hearing that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, on that level too, brother, you know, obviously you get all these people who make all these fucking crazy statements. And like Louie came to your rescue saying, no, I don't think he synth all yada yada. You know, let's, let's, let's kind of, help people understand you know so many people look at big guys and just thinks that it just think it's all peds and just think that it's all gear and it's think that it's it, it's you're a classic testament you know you've got some killer genetics you know your your diet you stay on your diet but it's not over the top but you're also i know when it comes to peds that's not been a huge part of your thing it's been the consistency you know and for all these people out there that thinking that you know, that they just got to go and, and do a bunch of fucking stupid shit to get big. You know, you're a classic testament to that. That's not been your thing. And I've always respected you for that. You know, I mean, yeah, I mean I've never been much insulin or gross. That's know? what I mean. That's what I mean. It, it's it's and, good and, to hear right from your mouth. Tell it. Explain to people, you know, because it's different when you hear it from somebody. You know, it's not me saying about you. It's you saying yourself. Look, it's it's been You've been doing this over time. You've been consistent. You know, you're doing this, you're doing that. Everybody thinks it's this magic button they can push with PEDs and it's not that way. So please share. Yeah, man. Um, you know, I've always just been a bigger believer and, you know, um, the basics, you know, the basic stuff, you know, there's all this new shit out and I'm not dogging it. I just never really tried it because I never felt like I needed to because I know it works for me. You know, and it's the basics, the basic shit. So, um, and, uh, you know, um, but, you know, everyone's different, man. You know, there might be someone out there. They need that new shit. They need the HGH and Slim. They, you know what I mean? So um, why would I need to do that if I'm already 360, you know, like you said, pretty lean? Like, why would, unless I'm trying to get to 400, which I don't ever want to do, you know, what would be the point, you know? Well, but, I mean, keep in mind, you know, if you, you know, you take, what you're saying, but the, the baseline of this has been the consistency. 
You know, this stuff doesn't make you, whether you're doing a lot or a little, without what you do over the length of time, none of this happens. You know, and there's so many people out there that, that go about the whole idea of using a PD very irresponsibly. And that's something that, you know, for the most part, those are the people that just do not understand, you know. All, and, three, all three of us right here, right, right now, all three of us, we're, we're, we're mass monsters. We all know that it takes the training and the food is the most important part. Yes. Every, everybody thinks it's all fucking gear. Like, that's yeah. all it is, man. I'm going to take a shitload of tests and DECA and I'm going to be, but I'm going to eat two meals a day. And I'm going to train like a bitch. It doesn't work that way, man. You got to, you got to go in the gym and you got to give it your all. Dude, you got to be walking out in pain and you got to force yes. these meals. To come, mm. you know? And if you don't do that, you know, the gear is shit, you know, exactly. It's Exactly. And for somebody like you, who's literally known as one of the biggest fucking bodybuilders on the planet, for people to hear you explain that, I think it's going to be really helpful because one of the things that really fucking really bothers me is there's this new generation coming through that is so misinformed, you know, and you see a lot of people making real poor decisions based upon their lack of knowledge because they don't know what they should know. And, and for, you're a classic example of that. I mean, you're one of these guys who, you know, you don't use synthol, which you've been accused of. It's great that fucking Louie came to your, I mean, the people that accuse this shit, they're the people that don't know, you know, the, the synthol things. What you see those guys, these fuckers, uh, I mean, they, they have these body parts that just looks like there's a fucking cantaloupe slit underneath their fucking uh, under their skin. And it's the same, whether they're flexing or not, that's synthol for Christ's sake. You know, what do you, I mean, share a little of your thoughts here too, brother. Aren't you, it's, it's, you think it's important that people understand that this is not just some chemistry experiment? I mean, yeah, definitely. I, I think like you said, with this new generation right now, everybody wants the, the physique, everybody wants to look, but they're not willing to work for it. Yeah. You know, I see you at the gym all the time, you know, and like you said, it goes with the, the saying of, you know, everybody like they see your achievement, but they don't see what you do behind closed doors. Yes. Know? Yes. And, and with social media and everything like that, mm -hmm. you know, they see the photos and everything like that, but they don't understand the amount of work that goes into that physique, you know? Yeah, totally. Like Craig just pointed out, you know, he was doing four or five or 20 reps. You know, they don't understand. That's what it takes to get a chest like that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> a lot of people, they yeah. don't understand. They think they could just go and put a plate on the, on the hammer strength machine and, banging a few reps and they don't understand that it takes a lot of work to get that kind yeah. of physique, you know, yeah. and unless, you know, you're willing to do that work, you're never going to achieve it. Mm -hmm. And you're going to think, yeah. you know, somebody's doing a bunch of growth or somebody, somebody's doing a bunch of insulin and all this other stuff to get that physique, but it's, it's not really true. It's a lot of hard work and it's a lot of consistency, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And I think, you know, for, you know, for it, I, I believe that it's, it's guys like us, the three of us, that it's, it's part of our duty to help this younger generation realize that they're just terribly misinformed, you know? Yeah. And, you know, if, if they want to get big, I mean, and we're talking, we got the biggest man on the planet here with us for him to testify that it's, it's the consistency, it's the diet. This is, this is what that generation needs to hear. So good shit, Craig. I appreciate you sharing that, but uh, you know, <clears throat> well, we're going to shift gears. This is the part of the show our, our show is Legends of Iron. Well, then we go into this fun part where it's legend has it. All right. So, Craig, what that means is <clears throat> you've heard plenty of legends about you that are just embellished. We've all heard them. You know, like I've heard stories about you that I know aren't true, but I just let them go because, I, you know, let your legend grow. So the question is, what are some of the craziest legends that you've heard about yourself? <laughs> crazy stories i've heard about myself yes exactly that, that you know are not true but it's just kind of funny how the fuck it just loops back to yourself like i've heard stuff about you that your arms are 29 inches and that you know your waist is 20 you know your arms and your waist are the same and you're 375 i mean granted you're, you're fucking crazy big but this is what happens that legendary thing just you know what it just spools so big and so fast so have you heard some crazy things about yourself that, that make you laugh? Whew. Um, crazy stories that I've heard about myself. Yourself. Yes. 
I know that's kind of a tough one. I could share a lot that I've heard about you. A lot of times they don't leap back to you, but <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> I'm on a podcast with Rick Holker. Um, I don't even put you on the spot, brother. I can give you a bunch that I've heard about you. you yeah, know? I mean, I, 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 I've heard like, do you mean like just like shit talking? Well, I mean, it can be all the above. You know, I mean, yeah. because when, when you're a person like yourself or any of us, we're in the spotlight enough that people talk. And usually when you tell it, someone tells a story and over time, the story continues to grow. And by the time it wraps back around, it's got the it's got the, the root of the truth, <laughs> but it's so much bigger than the original. You know what I mean? Um, <sighs> Stories I've heard about me. I'd have to really, I'd have, I'd have to really think. Um, I mean, I just heard like, you know, people saying I use crazy amounts of shit. Um, yeah. And I mean, like what they wrote, like, oh, this dude's taking this. I'm like, whoa, like, dude, that sounds like a death, you know? Yeah. Um, I've heard Synthol a lot, never touched it. Um, what else have I heard? That's, uh, um, and keep in mind, brother, <clears throat> you're obviously, you're probably seeing a lot of the stuff that you read social media i'll tell, I'll you, tell you one of the biggest one I, i've heard about craig is uh that he photoshopped his photos oh, yeah there, there's a yeah perfect example you know because people look at you mm -hmm. and I they mean, can't believe what they're seeing I like got that off. fucking like the picture that Ock pointed out in the beginning of yeah. you sitting on the train most I, people that have, that's that fucking picture is created so many legendary stories it's unbelievable I have a gr I have a great story about the Photoshop. This is this is unbelievable to me. This is how crazy people have gotten. This is how this is how crazy people want to see me go down sometimes. So this guy, he actually follows me on Instagram too. He did a YouTube video on me saying, Look at Craig. Look at Craig. He is Photoshop. Look at him. So there's a video of me. Um, I'm in the background. You know that monstrous dude? Um, he, he just competed many, many, many times. He lives here in Vegas. I can't pronounce his name. I want to say like Mo something. Hassan? Yeah. 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 So I'm in the background of one of his videos and like I'm looking like my, I'm looking, I guess a little off. I, I think I still look, I mean, to me, I saw it. I still looked big. I don't know. But they took a screenshot of that. And then another time I'm in the gym on my phone and they have a screenshot of me like on my phone with my right arm, you know, like, so like, so it's from the right and I'm showing on my phone like this. So they're taking it from the right side to hit my right arm. That's injured. And I, once again, I still look massive as shit, but my right arm looks a little smaller compared to my pictures. Yeah. So they posted these pictures like, look, he's fake. I'm like, if you guys knew, if you only knew, I've been going through an injury on my right arm the last year. You would, and you see on my Instagram, I post an old pictures. So you don't, nothing's new, you know, yeah. unless it's my back. I'll post shits, shots of my back all day long because my back's still huge. I mean, look, yeah. it was sad, you know, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, this dude is so mad at my career, he had to be like, look, he is fake. Look, look how, look, he doesn't look like his pictures. It's like, motherfucker, I've been injured a year. My right arm is, my whole tricep and form is just desized. I'm on lower gear. Brother, I'm think about this. Chilling. Think think about this. Like Ox said in the beginning, he saw that picture of you and he's like, that's what I want to do, right? Well, people yeah. all over the fucking globe have that same response. Some of them, they embrace the fact that you're this fucking man. Other guys, unfortunately, they get pissed off and jealous. This, it's so, yeah. He's mad. And then, you know, it, it gets worse. He starts posting videos of me where I look fucking super huge. Now, I'm like, didn't that just kind of answer your question that I am real? You just posted pictures of me flexing, looking bigger than my pictures. So yeah. that's what kind of confused me. But then again, it's in a different language. So I don't know what he's talking about. It's all in my <laughs> wrong like, I don't know what he's saying. So, but I'm just like laughing watching the video because it's like, you're that mad. You had to do a video on me. Like, like if you knew I was injured and I've been taking a break, like, like, let me ask you this, man. Like, 
it, like bodybuilders can't take breaks. Like, do I always have to walk around 360 pounds of muscle? Like, yeah. do you yeah, think yeah. that's healthy? You don't think <laughs> like I need to chill sometimes and take breaks? Like, and then people want to come at me like, look, he's not that huge. It's like, dude, I dropped 30 pounds for a couple months. Leave me alone. Like, yeah. you no, know, like, let me breathe. Like, let me be healthy. Like, isn't this what the world wants? Yeah. Yeah. And, th- yeah. and then they come back at you like, oh, look, he is smaller. Like, look, he doesn't like, and that's mm-hmm. why I have to wear a fucking hoodie at Olympia because well, of this look, fucking reason. <laughs> you, 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 you definitely, there's no Photoshop. I've seen you in person. You're the real deal. And like you said, man, if you got to take a break, who gives a fuck what they think, man? You're the real deal. Everybody, you know, people that are close to you, people that know who you are, they can attest to that. You're definitely the real deal, bro. So you're, you're definitely, when you're injured, you deserve a break. Man, you ain't got to prove anything to anybody else, man. And I got to say, I got to say too, as of com- competing, um, people that are competing, you're one of my favorite bodybuilders. So coming from you, bro, seriously, like made my day, man. Cause right now in the bodybuilding world, I don't really follow a lot of people, man, but you yeah. dude, you're like one of the last mass monsters with a small Thank waist, you. you know? Yeah. So I really appreciate that, man. Thank you so much, dude. You're welcome, bro. <clears throat> well, just to, to kind of, as we start to wrap things up here, brother, I got to tell you, from the standpoint of you may not hear a lot of legendary stories about yourself because it sounds like a, most of the negative shit is getting back to you. There, you, you are a living legend, and the legend of Craig Goliath and being out angled is alive and well. People, I mean, it's like you're that you're you're that guy that that's that most people don't think is actually real until they see you in person. So. You, you, uh, just so you know, I've clearly, you've heard a lot of the negative shit that wraps around, but I've heard a lot of positive shit and the negative shit that I hear, I, I always dust off real quick and straighten somebody up. But the bottom line is brother, you know, you are a living legend. You are one of the biggest, I mean, literally, I feel like a little bitch standing next to you. And I don't say that to many people. And, uh, it's been great to have you on the show. Oct, you got anything else you want to ask Craig before we bust out of here? Just, you know, just, you know, take care of yourself and, uh, hopefully that injured injury heals up really quick and you're back to you know, crushing weights and lifting heavy ass poundage, you know? Thank you guys so much, man. Seriously, man. Uh, we really got to do this again for sure. Yeah, we're cool. definitely going to have you back on for sure, brother. <clears throat> and when we have you back on, I'm sure after everybody sees this one, they're going to want to know much more about uh, how to manage two females in their life. So you're going to have to share a little more information about that. You know, keep in mind, let, let's just recap here. This is 350 pound Craig Goliath with abs living in a 5,000 square foot crib. And he's got a girlfriend that's got a girlfriend. He's got two ladies. He's big. He's bad. He's massive. He's legendary. Everyone. Craig Goliath, thank you very much for coming on the show, my brother. Thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate it. We'll do it again some too. You got it. We'll see you again, everyone, next time. Next time, Legends of Iron. Legend has it. We're going to always have a lot of fun, share some killer information, but most important, we are going to motivate you to become the best version of yourself. See you next time, everyone. Legends of Iron is brought to you by MuscleNets, the creator of Carnivore. Carnivore is the most powerful beef protein on the planet. 